So you may have seen recent photos of the Camp Nou's famous stands being slowly taken apart. This represents an end of an era for one of football's most iconic grounds. But with the stadium under reconstruction, the Catalan Giants have had to find a new home. And this is where they'll play. So the Camp News renovations mark the start of an ambitious plan to transform the stadium into one fit for the future. And you can see our video talking about these plans if you hit the link above. But did you know that while the stadium gets its long needed upgrade, FC Barcelona will be playing their football in a lesser known stadium in the Catalan capital. And it's not that of city rivals Espanyol, but rather Luis Campange Olympic Stadium, which can be found nestling amongst the hills of Montjuic that overlook the city. So what are the key facts you need to know about Barcelona's temporary home? First and most importantly, Barca will be playing the entire 2023-24 season at the stadium. This includes European football as well. It currently holds a capacity of 55,926. And just like the Camp Nou, it isn't covered entirely by roofs. You could almost say it's like a small Camp Nou. It does appear very similar. But unfortunately for many, the stadium actually being an Olympic stadium in origin means the fans will have to put up with a running track in between themselves and the players. However, with seats at the Camp Nou being in the heavens anyway, that might not make that much of a difference for some. So let's take a closer look at the ground. On a trip to Barcelona earlier in the year, a time that came shortly before the club confirmed their plans to use the stadium, I took an afternoon out to explore the surrounding area and the stadium itself. I'm just walking right beside the stadium at the moment, which you might think is a bit weird because it does very much seem like I'm in kind of like the countryside or something in Spain, you know, that kind of dry grass look. But I'm actually right beside it. If I pan around here, like it's just there. And this is kind of like the main entrance, as you can see kind of behind me there, the main doors as such. Uh, that's somewhere where a lot of fans would go and this space as well would definitely be a brilliant kind of if i pan it around here would definitely be a brilliant area kind of before the match or something like that you know we'd have some some beers or something like that which i know a lot of people like to do in spain you know go to the bars go to go to stand in a local park near the stadium and just have some beers together have a chat about the game so yeah definitely it's definitely got its own little nice uh, kind of feel to it, if you know what I mean. Definitely got a nice, nice atmosphere. So we're just walking down now into the kind of like courtyard area. Um, as you can see, you know, this is a massive area. So there's lots of room to accommodate the 60,000 fans that this ground holds. Um, yeah, let's just have a little walk around maybe and just kind of point out other aspects of the area, which I think are quite cool. I mean, you can really see from this angle at the far side how, you know, up amongst the hills it actually is as an area. <laughs> It'd be interesting to see some, you know, European ultras come here or something, um, see what atmosphere they create up here. So this is actually the area they've kept open for the public viewing. And as you can see, um, it's really nice ground, really big. Of course, it's got the Olympic track around it, so that'll make a bit of a difference for the, for the football pitch, you know, and the distance away from the ground. So a bit of history now. The stadium was actually built way back in 1929 as part of the city of Barcelona's field bid to host the 1936 Olympic Games, an Olympic Games that would later become infamous for the wrong reasons. However, despite the city failing in their bid to host the Games, the stadium actually hosted an alternative Olympics that was meant to oppose it being held in Germany of that year. And this event is even touched upon on a special plaque at the stadium. However, for 50 years after its first bid to host the Olympics, the Catalan capital finally succeeded in its dream. So in 1985, authorities began an extensive renovation campaign to transform the dilapidated stadium into one fit for the elite athletes of the day. And finally, in 1992, the stadium finally hosted the games. This was one of great importance in post-dictatorship Spain because it was one that showed that the people were united and looking towards a peaceful future. And Spain actually won the football side of things in that Olympic Games, with none other than Manchester City manager Pep Guardiola being amongst the gold medalists. The last team to use the stadium regularly were Barca's neighbours Espanyol, who stayed from 1997 to 2009. And since Espanyol have moved out, the city has used it for events like concerts and various athletic competitions. And this is where Barca now come in. 
In June 2022, the club struck a deal with the City of Barcelona authorities to lease out the stadium for the 2023-2024 season, and there wasn't really that many other options for the Catalan giants. Now, we have mentioned Espanyol's ground, which is of course a very, very efficient stadium in the city, but I'm not quite sure that the Espanyol fans would have been too happy to share it with those down the road in Barcelona. And this is why Barca's Estadi Johan Cruyff, often used for Barca B and women's games, doesn't really have the capacity to host that of the men's squad. For instance, you can see it's a nice compact stadium, but it's not really the size that could ever host major European games or El Clasicos. So all that really meant the Olympic Stadium represented the most realistic option. Okay, as I get absolutely blasted by the sun out in the beautiful day that we have in Barcelona, I would say that maybe the one downside of this ground that I can think of is the transport infrastructure. Now, of course it's up in the hills like we've talked about before, but it really is a downside for me in the fact that it is a bit difficult to get up here for someone who used to live here, like myself. I know kind of different ways to get up here and it still does take a bit of time. But at the same time, you know, there is a few train stations. There is a metro station just to the right of me, really, in terms of maybe it's about a five, 10 minute walk. There are bus services, but like any city, Barcelona does have infrequent bus timetables at some points. But I'm sure they could arrange like a shuttle or something like that into the city. Um, and I mean, I suppose that goes for getting out as well in terms of um, comparing it to say where the, the Camp Nou is at the moment. You know, you, there's a lot of stations around it. There's one specifically called Les Courts. And it's a place where if you know you're going to be, you know, if you know the train's going to be busy, then you can, you can just get off a few stops early or you can walk down a bit after the game or walk the other way to get it earlier before people actually get on. So you can't really do that here because the line over there, it's the end of the line up, up here. And then the buses are, you know, like I say, they can be infrequent. So that's one downside to this. I think that's the, one of the only real downsides. Um, I mean, I'm not sure what it was like when the Olympics were going on, but they must have had a lot of special things going on at that time. But yeah, that's the only really downside I can give it. But for Barcelona, it will be about how they perform in the pitch that takes more importance of where they play. Of course, it's going to be different. And of course, it's going to be quite a different atmosphere for those who follow the club. But what do you think about the stadium? Let us know in the comments if it's somewhere where you'd make the trip to see Barcelona play, because this will be an historic season that they'll be away from the Camp Nou. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to the Partido, where we'll be having lots more of the Spanish football and speaking world in English coming up in the coming months.